Behold, the Brooklyn Bridge. And, uh-oh, here comes Godzilla rising out of the water. Oh, oh he's attacking the bridge. Oh, it's like 1999 Godzilla with Matthew Broderick, but he's taking all those cars and he's eating them. Yum, yum, and all the people are screaming like, oh no, I had, I was used to be an accountant, but that was all for nothing. And like they fall, and now here comes the Air Force, and they're like, pshaw, pshaw, oh, oh, get down from here, Godzilla, don't step on that uh, classic vintage carousel that's in Brooklyn Bridge Park, and then they are stepping on it, but oh, nobody can stop Godzilla because the missiles can't stop them but now here comes a, like a little little tiny like hispanic woman and she's like hey godzilla no you're stop stop doing that here's rice and beans and then godzilla's like i'm hungry and he like he eats all the rice and beans and then she's like oh i love you godzilla and then godzilla experiences love for the first time or he's able to acknowledge it and he lets her into her heart and he stops and, and pauses for a second and he looks around at all the destruction he's made and realizes what a horrible big fat mess and he's like grandma what have i done and she's like we forgive you and then mayor de blasio is like we forgive you and then the new york post is like go oh, oh, screw de blasio and then godzilla is like well you know what i'm just a big mess so he goes out in the ocean and we never see him again And with me, Alexander Payne. Yep. You want to talk about race? I like talking about race. Okay. I don't know. Do you have anything to say about race? That's an open-ended question. Uh, it's funny. It is funny. What about it is funny? Um, that you're not supposed to talk about it now. Yeah. Right. Who Who do you think doesn't want to talk about it? Uh, I guess liberal people more than anybody. Yeah. Racist people love talking about it. Oh yeah, yeah. They talk about it all the time. Yeah, yeah. me and. White racist people love talking about race. Yeah. Yeah. But I think liberal people don't like talking about it. I think sometimes they don't want to, I mean, this sounds redundant, but they don't want to have the conversation. They just want to pretend it doesn't exactly. happen. They don't want to, like, confront the tension, I think. that. Where's the tension, though? I don't I'm I think it's just much. natural, just, like, there's differences between people yeah. in races and between Ethnicities. that uh, makes, like, an awkward situation and I think people just want to avoid that awkward Yeah, but there's a difference between a man and a woman, but they're still able to talk to each yeah, other. Yeah, I guess they talk about that. Yeah. yeah. I think the different the thing is that somewhere they felt they were supposed to be they're the bad guys. Yeah. And they're they're not supposed to have anything to offer. And it goes back and both forth both ways where sometimes I get mad when black people go like, you know, white person shouldn't do this. There was a painting that just came out and went to go see because yeah. I'm a big faggot. I yeah. went to go see this painting at the Whitney. Yeah. Dana Schultz did a painting of Emmett Till. Yeah. And it was uh, a lot of black artists got mad and it was like, this white lady should not profit off of a dead black blah, yeah. whatever. And I'm like, well, I mean, this is this lady's experience of that. She's a mother, and she connected to it that way. Why can't she paint something? Because she's white? Yeah. That's what they used to say to us. Like, yeah. you can't do this because you're black. So, I don't know. It's just getting really fucked up with the whole letting black people drive what's, a, what's racist and what's not yeah. racist van. And it's gonna, we're going to drive it off a cliff. And then pretty soon, nothing's going to be racist. Yeah. And that's the real problem. It's because we make everything racist, then nothing's racist. Right. So when something happens like Flint or these people down in Chicago, that's when people are going to go, mm, well, everything's racist. So what are you going to do? And there's also something like, it's just like, um, it, 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 there is the big problem and like it, it, uh, of racism. And I think if like the Emmett Till painting yeah. was a part of it. It's just like, is that what you're going to focus on? You know what I mean? Is that, I don't know if it's a distraction or I don't know if that's the best way. I don't think that, yeah. just for that painting, I mean, like her mother, when he died, her mother 
uh, took his photo yeah. to remind people that this thing happened and don't ever forget it. Yeah. And a lot of people, I think, don't know about it now. Yeah. Let, let alone, I mean, maybe black people. That's like a thing that's taught to black people. But yeah. like, I don't know about a lot of white people. But, uh, and then she painted it, and you know, she got a way of people talking about it again. And you know, it's a, I think it's a great painting. But it's so weird that you know we've become the, black people have become the thought police. Right. It's kind of sucks because yeah. we were supposed to be, you know, supposed to be the liberal free thinkers, but now somehow we've become. But really, no, no one's really stopping anyone from saying anything they want. Yeah. It's just this idea that there's pressure to not say it. It's not black in its entirety, I don't think, like that or yeah. say, making that conversation that would balk at the Emmett Till. I mean, uh, like, I feel like um, w when I hang around black people, there's some people who are a little bit more cautious and then some people who are just like, are able to let... Well, is it comedy? Is it comedians? Yeah, it's comedians, but it's also like... Comedians don't count because we're so open with each other. Yeah, but I used to work like um, a more working class job and yeah. like 95% of the people I worked with were like people from the hood and yeah. working class people and we just joke around a lot about race and things were a little yeah. bit more porous and they'd follow that like rails of... I, I think it's loaded when people talk about political correctness because that's also attached to like the alt-right, but like yeah. it wasn't... Like, what we joke about won't be politically correct. We kind of, like, barb into each other or kind of lean into each what other. What is politically yeah. correct? Is there a yeah. book, a handbook somewhere? No. I mean, it keeps getting updated, doesn't yeah. it? Like, you can't say these words, you can't say these. Or, you know, what are the words that you can't say? That's why I say whatever, you know, I say faggot, nigger, yeah. chick, whatever. I, it's just one of those things where they go, you shouldn't say these words, and then I go, why not? And nobody can give you a reason why. Yeah. So why not just say them? You know what I mean? It's It's a weird thing where, you know... I got into a fight with another comedian about, you know, they say white people shouldn't say the N-word. Yeah. And I had this thing where I talked about maybe none of us should be saying it. Yeah. And then the one black guy said, well, you know, it's the only thing I think that we have that white people can't take away from us. And I was like, how sad is that that you think that that's the word? Yeah. That's the one thing we got that yeah. we go, oh, white people shouldn't say this. Yeah. But I don't know. I'm just as confused as everybody, but I just know I just keep throwing shit at the wall and I, I really don't care where it lands. I think that's fun. I think that's why, like, I mean, I don't talk about it. I think about race a lot, and it plays in my head a lot. And I think yeah. part of it is, like, there's, like, um, a lot of not, like, bad tension, but there's a lot of unresolved answers yeah. with race, especially when it comes to America. And I think it's just, like, something just that's fun to play in your head, and it deals with, especially being in a place like New York where it's so diverse or like formerly growing up in Miami, it's just like something that, you know, you always have to negotiate where you stand versus where you, the larger culture stands and all these little smaller cultures yeah. stand. And I think that's kind of what's fun about race. And I always kind of, um, I, I think I talked about this on the show before, but like I've been listening to a lot of Martin Luther King and mm -hmm. like, like, um, like he was, I, I think it's like a thing where like he saw a lot of pressure on top of himself and yeah. he wasn't talking. He would talk critically and he would talk negatively, but he would also spend like three months in jail and at the end tell his jailers, like, come on, join us. You want to join us? You're just, you're not different than us. And I think yeah. um, there's a way of saying like we're all the same. That kind of just makes like whiteness kind of like that's like a really shitty way of saying it that makes like the corporate weird capitalist system. Well, of, race you know. doesn't necessarily always have to do with you guys. Yeah. Like, race, there's a whole inner fight between Like, colorism. Blacks. Yeah, not yeah. even colorism, just the type of black. Yeah. You listen to Martin Luther King. Yeah. Malcolm X, when Martin Luther King was alive, called Martin Luther King Uncle Tom. Yeah. This is Martin Luther King. Yeah. And he's calling him, you know, you ain't shit. And what's his name? I went to Africa. Um, uh, uh, Marcus Garvey. He wasn't just critical. I'm not thinking of him. You thinking of the other Carmichael, Stokely Carmichael? Yeah, Stokely Carmichael. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So there's a group, there's a fight amongst blacks. Yeah. And not a fight, but like there's this kind of inner weird workings where it's like light skinned blacks versus dark skinned blacks, house negroes versus field negroes. Yeah. And there's this whole th dynamic that with race that really, even if white people all of a sudden died because of some yeah. World War Z disease, yeah. and believe me, I fantasize about it, yeah. but like even if that happened, they'd still be fighting amongst black people. You know Bill Hicks, right? Yeah, yeah I know Bill Hicks. Fan, Bill Hicks. Yeah. Uh, he has that one bit about like, which I think makes him a great, like, put, like I think it's just the capstone that like unites his whole stuff about like how like he dreams one day yeah. that we'll all get together and throw away all our guns and get a spaceship and, and um, 
you know, explore the stars. But every time I hear that story, it's like, there's still dickheads in that spaceship. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? And we're still yeah. going to be assholes. Like, I always feel like I have, like, a utopian vision, but at the same time, I'm a little bit, I'm not, I wouldn't say cynical, but it's just like, oh, but you can never cure douches. <laughs> You know? It's weird the reasons people hate, like, even yeah. Koreans and Japanese, they go, like, they hate each other. But to us, we're like, well, you're all Asian. And they yeah. go, no, 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 we're not Korean. Yeah, yeah. And the Koreans are like, well, fuck the Japanese. And the Chinese are like, fuck them. It's, it's just, it's always going to be around, but it never gets any better by pretend, pretending it doesn't exist. No, no. You know what I mean? And I like, I like jokes. They kind of feel like they can, uh, God, I don't want to sound hack, but like, I think jokes are a good way to heal or just call attention or bring to light. Uh, stuff, even if it's like kind of. It's a stupid thing. Yeah. The fact that you care about someone's skin color or you care like this, dating this person makes yeah. you blacker than this. It's a retarded thing. Yeah. And it's fun to just make fun of it where you go, why are we so wrapped up in the way this guy acts or yeah. this way look? This person looks, so why not make fun of it? Yeah. You know? It's not a big deal. I have no problem with it. I'm not, I don't take. I hope I don't take myself that seriously. Where I go, you know, nobody should joke about this, and yeah. they say not say these words. And I imagine I have lines. I just it's harder to articulate it. I think everybody like I heard somebody talk about like sexual politics, where like people who are into like bondage and stuff, they're like, don't yeah. ever say you don't have any limits because everybody has a limit, and you don't want to meet up with that. Just like, uh, but at the same time, I think there's a difference between like having like really flexible limits. And um, maybe something that's more aligned with, well, if it's funny, which means that if it rings a little bit true, like that's where it is, where it's just like. I'm weird in that sense yeah. with comedy. I don't necessarily listen for people's punchlines. I yeah. listen to go like, what are they trying to say? And sometimes a lot of comedians will say things that'll make me mad. And I go, I don't agree with that. But I go, I look at myself and I go, why don't I agree with that? Because yeah. whatever it was, whatever they said, they got a reaction out of me. Yeah, yeah. It may not have been laughter, yeah. but they got me involved. Yeah. So to me, that's interesting to go, he said something that reacted to me, but why did I react this way? So for me, comedy is, like even other people's comedy is more introspective, but that's because like I'm an introvert, yeah. where like I just hear it and then it bounces around in my head and I go, why did that like ring with me? And then I just keep playing around with it for like, that's what it looks like when I'm like not talking to people. I'm yeah. just thinking all the time, which is not healthy. It's like you have an angel. You ever look like like the hip comedians who are in the back of the room? Like you looks like you got like things stewing up there instead of just like I'm uncomfortable, so I, have to be, oh. yeah, I can't do with those comics at all. But whatever. I always I think a, a big kind of watchword for me with comedy is like urgency. I feel like there's like a reason yeah. for somebody who's saying it, or if there's like a like a bomb in the room that they're calling attention to, which like Mitch Hedberg I think is urgent. Yeah. yeah I mean, he has that one joke. Is like. Uh, uh, I don't have a girlfriend, just somebody who would get mad if you ever heard me say that. Yeah. Like, you see an entire story there, and yeah. his entire relationship with his, like, girlfriend and then wife, and just, I think that's an important thing. I think that what makes good comedy. I think it's just, like, a cheap word I kind of latch on to. The, like you said, whatever, I don't know, the elephant in the room. Like, yeah. I remember one of the funniest things I saw on everybody's... Like Patrice, or? No, 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 like, uh, Bill Cosby, after the rape allegations yeah. came out, he did a joke. <laughs> something about like yeah. a lady she was had a drink in her hand he said you know you're not supposed to have your drinks around me it's so funny <laughs> when you go, even if he's a rapist he's still a comic for a good rapist <laughs> I had this idea this is terrible yeah. and if I ever become something I'll get fired for this yeah. but they were like uh, you know Bill Cosby's names for specials right yeah. where I was like what if each special was named like because of the rapes <laughs> where it was like first one's Bill Cosby himself then the next one is 49. That's yeah. the amount of women he was raping. Yeah. The next one is far from finished. Yeah. To let you know he's not done raping. No. And then the last one was supposed to be 77. Yeah. So that was the number he was at. What about Oh God or Amen? I can't remember what it was called. The one with Noah. With Noah? Yeah. The story of Noah? You're talking about Cosby, right? Yeah. I don't think that's the special. That's just a oh, that's, story. That's No, that, that was an album. That's an album, okay. but that's not like him on tape letting you know. What's your... What's your, uh, when you get your special or album, what would you call it? You want to know what, this is how fucking terrible I am, like, making fun of race and shit like that. 40 minutes and a mule. Ah. <laughs> we talked about it. I was like, yeah, that'd be fun to do. That, I had one I came up with, and this one's far off, but it's like, uh, when I'm really good, if I get really good. I name it Sweet Chariot or something like that, and it's going to be based off of a, I'd probably do it in Oakland, or I'd do it in South Carolina, 
uh, Charleston, South Carolina, because I got this idea about that's where the civil rights, mm. uh, not the civil rights, that's where the uh, civil war started. Yeah. And that's also the same place where that, that boy Dylan Roof shot those uh, nine black people in the church. And that's also the same place where the cop who shot that guy, Walter Scott, in the back is yeah. in South Carolina. And they both have the same lawyer. Really? That's they have the same lawyer. The guy is also defending the cop, is also defending the family yeah. to get money from the state. And I had this whole weird inner workings about it where like I think it's funny and I don't know, I just I had like a, a an epiphany where I was like, if I ever make a great special it'll come out of South Carolina, Charleston. They seem like they'd be good crowds. They got good comic clubs. But I mean, you know, why come to New York and LA and say a bunch of stuff that they're gonna be receptive to? Yeah. And New York and LA are not America. No. It's it's the middle of the country, you know what I mean? I'm from Los Angeles, from South Central, but even I realize that's just so far, so progressive. Isn't that the same as saying kind of like uh, colorism? What do you mean? Like thinking that you have ownership uh, to define somebody's identity. Like it's like like New York and L.A. is not America. It's not true America. Well, it's not though. I mean, it's like it's kind of like the fringes of America yeah. because you get so many different like. I don't know, thinkers and, 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 and things of that nature that the middle of the country is almost like, I don't want to say, I don't want to say, it's not more American, it's just, I don't know, I feel like they're often forgotten, Yeah. if that makes sense. They're marginalized. They're marginalized, yeah. yeah. I mean, I guess even I'm saying it right now, but I feel more like one of those people than I ever felt like more of a... You know what typical Los Angeles is like for most people. Most people don't even know what LA is like. They just tell you, "Yeah, I went there and I saw Beverly Hills," and you go, "Well, you didn't see Los Angeles. You just yeah. saw Beverly Hills." It's like going to New York and not seeing Queens. Yeah. yeah, a lot of people go, "I won't go to Brooklyn. I won't yeah. go to these places." That's how I knew I was one of those weird people that life was gonna make you see shit you didn't want to see. Because yeah. as soon as I moved to New York, somebody was like, "All right, you're going to get a job in East New York." And I was like, cool. And then I realized East New York is the worst neighborhood mm. in New York. And I was like, oh, yeah, this is not cool. But I kept realizing that for whatever reason, fate or whatever kept making me see all these things that, I don't know, normal people who move to the city never get to see. Yeah. And I go, I don't know what it is about me, but I'm one of those people that, like, even if I went to fucking, I don't know, heaven, I'd probably be like, They'd be like, God, be like, all right, you gotta go check out the ghetto real quick. Yeah, I don't know why. Ghetto I don't know, I'm the ghetto reporter for like every. It, you know Saul Alinsky? No. He was a community organizer, Obama. Um, he was like uh, white, I think Polish or something like that, uh -huh. around the same time as Cesar Chavez and Martin Luther King. He was community organizing in Chicago. And I think Obama was influenced by him. Like, yeah. he was a big deal when Obama first ran for president. It was like, he was trained by the Saul Alinsky uh, thing. Uh, he said in his book, he goes, like, uh, when I die, I want to go to hell because I want to be around the have-nots. <laughs> yeah, man, that's what yeah. it feels like. Working class people, I think, always feel that way. Yeah. They, No matter what, you either feel comfortable with a certain group of people or you don't. And and I, I've always had that balance with it where it's like, because my dad was a, he worked with his hands. He was a mason. He did construction. And so from the time I was eight to the time I was, like, till he died, which was, like, you know, whatever, I was working with him. I've always been around people who are from Guatemala or yeah. Mexico or him. And I've always been around people who worked with their hands and did shit, you know what I mean? But then now I'm in this part of my life where I'm in comedy and I'm around a bunch of people that are like, I can't eat peanuts. Yeah. And I'm like, what the fuck am I doing here? So yeah. I feel like a fraud in some ways. And also I feel like I just, these, not that I'm not comfortable, but I'm like, these people's problems aren't real problems. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I hear stuff about race and stuff and I go like, this isn't a real problem. This isn't like, I remember I was complaining about something like growing up in LA and South Central and I was talking to the guy that works in my deli. He's from Egypt and yeah. the other guy's from Yemen. And if you know anything about Egypt right now, uh, ISIS is a real big problem. Yeah. So when I was talking to him, he was like, yeah, man, I went home too, man. And ISIS is real bad. I was like, let me shut the fuck up. <laughs> Cause South Central doesn't have ISIS. No. So. I don't know. I, it's it's that's the one thing I, I like about uh, New York is that there are working class people. It's just that you know that's just never what's shown. Yeah. It's always like the people that come from wherever and they move here and they're like you know up and starters like you know what is it? I guess uh, what is it? Transplants. Question? Transplants. Yeah. Yeah, 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 transplants. But it's a certain kind of transplant. Yeah. It's like a certain kind of like tech savvy, 
I feel like there's two. It's like like the kids who just didn't belong anywhere, who yeah. kind of get bounced to New York. Yeah. And then just the yuppies who are kind of more. I had this girlfriend once who I'm kind of bitter about, but I remember like she moved to the city to become a writer, mm -hmm. and all she would do was just drink and go to the flea market. And then three years later, her bar closed that she worked at, mm. and then she moved out. And it kind of felt like a Calvin and Hobbes space alien where it just comes in, uses up all the resources of New York, like gentrifies it, and then bounces out. Whereas like, I feel like some other transplants uh, um, will come in and invest in the community or grow and let the city grow around them. Because I, um, I think people can be kind of negative about transplants but it's also it, it's that tension between like people who grew up their entire lives here yeah. and um uh people who are just new and fresh and constantly refreshing or been here for a minute but didn't start here i think where the negative comes in about transplants and i get it mm -hmm. because technically i'm one of them but a lot of people when they see me they don't think i am and yeah. but i get what it is for most people because i've when I, when I first moved here, I was living in a neighborhood that was okay. It wasn't, I mean, it used to be really bad before I got here, but uh, when I moved in, there was this white girl that got beat up or something by these Puerto Rican girls or something. And I remember it took like, I don't know, 20 minutes, some 30 minutes for the police to come. Yeah. And then I went home to LA for like two, three years. And then I came back, there was police cars circling the block like all the time. Right. But, but when I came back, there were more uh, white people living in the neighborhood. It was a much more... Yeah. And then, so what happens is, if you're a person of color, or if you grew up in that neighborhood, you can be one of the Russians that live down in Coney Island right. or whatever. They're like, oh, so we don't matter until they come. Right. And that sends a very subtle message to a lot of disenfranchised people going, so you build all these things, you paint all everything when they come. I've yeah. been here living my whole life, and you're telling me I didn't matter. So suddenly, on a lower level, you feel that way. I felt that way growing up in South Central when I, was, when I first went to like Beverly Hills and going back, like, I remember seeing their neighborhood versus my neighborhood, and I remember going, fuck, like, Jesus Christ, I'm like, you know, I still have that, too, where I go, I'm in a room with, like, a nice whatever, and I go, like, man, I don't, I have, like, panic, not panic attacks, but I have, like, funny thoughts about, like, mm. not, I don't know, just not being shit, where I was like, man, I'm never going to be shit. Yeah. And then now, every now and again, I start getting, I higher up in this and stuff and then I, I start looking at it and I'm going like man what if I actually made something out of myself you know what I mean because yeah. I never really thought about like you know what this stuff can do for you and all that I just kind of took it for granted which is like you just be funny and you know hopefully they'll give me a job for it I look at it a working class way I don't look yeah. at it like you know oh, I'm gonna go to China and you know some people look at it that way I'm gonna go to Montreal I'm gonna do all these things I don't I just kind of take it for you know seeing the other person in the room and working with them yeah kinda. It's nice. I think my favorite thing about comedy is just you grow all the time. Friendships for me. Yeah. You know, if that too. you get to know someone for 20 years. Yeah. I remember when I first moved here, I was like, I looked around and realized, like, and it wasn't entirely true. It didn't pan out entirely true. It was like, but, like, I looked around at the people I knew my first six months in. I'm like, I'm going to know these guys for years yeah. at least. And these are relationships, and that's a privilege. And I think... Um, you can move away and yeah. still know, no matter what, yeah. if you, like, kind of started with the guy, you feel like... Some sort of kinship. Yeah. Where you go like, oh no, 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 that guy is, you know, I'll defend him or something like that. You have a racist rant, you're a rapist. I yeah. got you get at least one interview where I go, John's John's a good guy, man. <laughs> you get one interview. One interview. And yeah. then three rapes and I'm just out. That's oh. when I go, you know what? I should have known, I should have saw this coming. <laughs> yeah. Other than that, I don't know. That's just I don't know, is race is race is really the most important thing going on right now, you know, in America, I don't think, right? Everybody's still I think it's a, Trump. I think it's just everything that's just glom together. I think like there's the big problem with the capital T and capital P and then it's got all these arms that stretch out of it. It's like here comes race, here comes economic inequity, here comes the weird shit we have about gender, here's like environmental issues and That's the one that gets everybody. Yeah. When like I remember someone asked me that it was like, is it harder to be black or they asked me, do you think it's hard to be black or to be Muslim? Yeah. And I was like, I think it's harder to be a fucking penguin right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, every day their real estate is getting smaller and smaller. <laughs> they got to kill each other. To penguin live. lives matter. Nah, nah, that won't happen. No. Nah. Maybe, you know what? Maybe we probably don't care because we can clone them now. Yeah. That's the thing. You have anything else? Uh, no, I think I'm embarrassed myself enough. All right, cool. I got to go pee. Okay. Welcome to the Alexander Payne Show now.
Behold, the Brooklyn Bridge. And it's under attack by Godzilla. Oh no, it's Godzilla. Oh, he's, he's...